So in terms of privacy policies, uh, basically, since the mid or late late 1990s, any website or grab that obtains, stores, or uses, or otherwise deals with any personal data should have had a privacy policy. Um, and and so, if you have been going for a few years, you will or you should have had some sort of policy on your website about how you deal with personal data. The, the, the new general data protection regulation, the GDPR, that came into force earlier this year is, imposes stricter requirements um, uh, uh, so that even if you had a privacy policy beforehand, it needs to be updated to comply with the new stricter requirements, and we're going to be talking about those later on. And again, as I said, the policy is about information. It's about informing people about what are you going to do with their data? What data do you take from them? How does that data, uh, how does that data get processed? What rights do people have in relation to their data that you hold? And this is a, an absolutely critical document. Um, we're not all of us, uh, uh, Facebook or Google or Twitter, um, where, you know, obviously there have been controversies, ongoing controversies and in the past about how personal data is, is being used. But those are examples of where things can go wrong. And it is important for any company, whether you employ uh, 10,000 people across the world or five people uh, in an office in uh, the UK, it's important that the regulations be complied with because, as we'll see, the punishments or the, the potential downsides can be quite severe. So, as I said, purpose of a privacy policy is to inform. So, broadly speaking, it needs to cover who you are and how to contact you. Now, this may seem an obvious thing, but, obvi uh, but, but a lot of people a lot of websites, a lot of apps trade upon the name of the app or the website, but the company behind it is a, a different name. Um, so it's important in your privacy policy to have the legal name of the person that's responsible for the app or the website. And how to contact you. It's got to be, a, you know, some easily contactable, not just necessarily an address, but some email address or, 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 or telephone number. Um, what data is collected and how? Uh, and I think that this is something that actually sometimes you need to think about in, a, in more detail than you would otherwise uh, consider. Because if you are, if, if people sign a form online, then you're obviously taking whatever email address, name, telephone number, address. But there are also other other data that you may be collecting by the way of automatic functioning of the website or the or, or, or the internet. So you may be taking an IP address, location of their computer and, and other things. So you have to think about what information you're being, uh, you're collecting from them and, and, and how you use that data. Um, to a certain, so, so you've all signed up to this are you Bender conference and you know that the data that you that you provide is going to be used so that you can join this uh, webinar and listen to me talk but then there may be other uses you know it may be for audit purposes or whatever and anybody that has a privacy policy has to understand and be clear about how that data is intended to be used whether the data is going to be disclosed to anybody else um, it could be that uh, you're part of an international group of companies and you want to disclose the data within your intra-company and that's something that needs to be considered whether you can do that or not and if you can how do you get consent for that whether the data will be transferred internationally now obviously the GDPR is is applicable in uh, Europe um, and there is not necessarily the same amount of protection in other jurisdictions so for example commonly if you if people want to transfer data to um, the US or, or any third party outsourcing company, for example, for a, 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 a customer database that, that is being uh, uh, managed by a third company that is located outside of Europe, you have to consider how that data is going to be transferred and whether you can do that. And then the last sort of three things that to think about is not just about what, you're, what data you're using and how you're gonna use it, but how do you keep the data secure? Um, 
every almost every week it seems to me that there is a bit in the news about some data breach um the most recent one i think being there's a big british airways uh, hack there was a big leak on uh, marriott hotels and the privacy policies has to, to have to describe how what um uh, what measures you're taking to keep the data secure and how long you keep the data for um you should really only keep it for as long as you need it, but it needs to be clear in the privacy policy how long you're going to keep the data for. And then finally, and this is something that the GDPR has strengthened, is that data owners legal rights into, in relation to the data. Um, so we will, we will go through, uh, uh, so <laughs> I think I might have talked about all of this already, but in theory, this all seems simple. I'm not going to go through this slide in detail because I think this is something that I've just talked about. But just on the how to deal with data owners' legal rights, um, you probably will all have heard about this, uh, the right to be forgotten, and that's something that has been introduced uh, in the new GDPR. And it's something that just it's just about making provision for it in the policy. 